Now, 2024 is a massive election year across the globe, but it's also a pretty big election year in this country. And it really all kicks off in earnest on May the 2nd, when there will be elections for the Mayor of London, elections for the London Assembly. Nine Metro mayors are up for election as well. 37 police and crime commissioners are also going to be elected, along with 2,000 618 council seats of various types across the country. Of those seats at the moment, the Conservatives hold 985 seats, Labour 966, and the Lib Dems 410. I'm joined down the line by Sir John Curtis. And before we get, Sir John, to your general election predictions, uh, this is a reasonably big batch of elections, isn't it, on May the second. Uh, what should we be looking out for? Yes, it is a reasonably big batch. In fact, once you put all that complicated set of various elections together, everybody in England and Wales will get the chance to vote for at least something uh, on May the 2nd. So that, to that extent, it is an important and big test. Now, the thing you have to understand is that most of these elections are for seats and for offices that were last contested in May 2021. Now, in May 2021, the Conservatives were six points ahead in the opinion polls, and indeed they managed to win the Hartlepool by-election on the same day. They yeah. gained the seat from Labour. And that was also, broadly speaking, reflected in the outcome of the local elections that day, although we should always remember the Liberal Democrats do better, always do better in local elections than they're doing in the current poll. So in other words, uh, actually, as in, in, even as compared with last year, the Conservatives will be defending a pretty high baseline in most of these elections. We're now in a situation where the Conservatives are on average 20 points behind in the opinion polls. Uh, now, local elections, the swings don't always exactly reflect what we might expect uh, given what the polls are saying, that, that would suggest about a 13-point swing as compared with 2021. Last year, the swing in the local elections was a bit lower than the swing in the polls at the time. But even so, you can see a 10-point swing against the Conservatives on average in these polls are, are not unlikely. That could mean that they might lose maybe a half of the council seats they're trying to defend, maybe a half of the councils where they're trying to defend overall control, around 10 or so of the PCC elections. Um, perhaps their worst result in the Greater London, London Assembly elections ever since the first one in 2000, and probably Andy Street in the West Midlands might be struggling to hang on uh, to his post as the Conservative West Midlands mayor. So you can see there is potentially quite a lot at stake, and you can see how quite quickly there is a risk, at least, that these local elections could prove to be a rather bad news story for the Conservatives. Yeah, I mean, let's say, you know, they lose half their seats, they're down to 500 councillors in this particular round. You know, is that the level at which the sort of Rishi Sunak alarm bells start to ring and uh, letters start pouring in and we're into new leadership contests? Is there, is there a number here somewhere um, that would be acceptable for the government, given, as you say, in 2021, they were on a high. Is there a level of loss that they might find acceptable? Yeah, sure. I'll give you a very simple benchmark. If we take um, the position in last year's local elections, uh, when you look at the votes as opposed to looking at seats and extrapolate to the country as a whole, you were looking at the Conservatives being about nine points behind Labour. If they can do better than that in these local elections, and that would mean that, for example, uh, they wouldn't, they'd be losing you know, maybe 300 council seats rather than 500. Uh, right. They might be hanging on to most of the councils where they're trying to hang on to control. Um, they would be losing perhaps no more than a half a dozen PCC elections. If they can get the numbers down to that kind of level, then Rishi Sunak would at least be able to claim that despite what the polls are saying, he's made a degree of progress and that if they continue to make progress between then and the autumn, uh, then things wouldn't be, uh, then uh, the party might yet manage to hang on. So the truth is, yeah, you can see how anything that's significantly better than that initial set of numbers I gave you yeah. could mean that Mr. Sonic will be able to say things are getting better.
OK, that's really useful. We're going to keep, our, keep that uppermost in our minds over the course of the next five weeks. Now, Sir John, you know, you're not a man that uh, strikes me as being a huge gambler or someone that makes outrageous comments and claims. You're mm -hmm. a political scientist, a sophologist. Um, but you've come out and said that it's 99% certain that Labour will win the general election. Uh, actually, so? no, you need to be out, Nigel. As you say, I'm very careful about what I say. What <laughs> I said was in a presentation to fellow political scientists last night is that there was a 99% chance that Labour would form the next government. Okay. And that is not the same thing. Now, let me walk you through it. At the moment, the opinion polls, on average, have Labour 20 points ahead. Now, let's look at recent full-length parliaments like the parliamentary 92 and 97 or 2005 and 2010. And this is going to be a full-length parliament. What is the biggest narrowing of the lead that has occurred in the last eight months or so of such a parliament? Well, it proves to be the six-point narrowing of the Conservative lead over Labour in 2010. Now, let's also say that maybe the polls collectively will suffer exactly the worst of the recent polling failures, which is 1992, when they overestimated Labour's position mm. relative to the Conservatives by about eight points. Let's put that in the mix as well. So we're taking two extreme events, adding them together, and we've still got Labour six points ahead. Now, that is probably hung Parliament territory rather than Labour majority territory. But, and this is the other thing, it's the other thing behind the 99%. It's not just the poll lead. It's the Conservatives are short of friends inside the House of Commons. The, we know that the Democrats will not sustain, yeah. help sustain a minority Conservative administration. We certainly know the SNP won't. Clyde won't. Maybe, maybe just the DUP might again, though, whether they'll be willing to do so again, no question mark. Yeah. But to get to that situation, we're talking about the Conservatives needing to be at least 315, 316 seats or so. That implies at least a Conservative two-point lead over Labour. Right. And we are still <laughs> quite a long way short. So that, that's the calculation, Nigel. Okay. It needs to be something unprecedented to get to yeah. the Conservatives to a situation where they might be able to hang on to power. So, John, many thanks for joining us and explaining that. It just goes to show, don't believe every headline you read in newspapers. Thank you very much indeed.